The metabolism of amino acids requires two important processes, two important steps. The first step is called transamination, and the second step is called oxidative deamination. Now, after transamination, oxidative deamination, we form a nitrogen-containing molecule and a carbon skeleton. Now, the nitrogen-containing molecule, depending on the needs of the cell, can either be excreted from the body or it can be reused to help form another biological molecule. When we form the carbon scale, that carbon skeleton can be transformed into intermediate molecule that can be used to help form energy molecules, so ATP molecules. In this lecture, I want to focus on the transamination step. Now, virtually all amino acids undergo the transamination step, and the exception to this rule are the amino acids threonine and lysine. Threonine and lysine do not undergo this transamination reaction. Instead, they directly undergo the oxidative deamination reaction. And we'll talk about this reaction in the next lecture. So let's focus on this transamination step. So here we have an alpha amino acid that we want to metabolize. And here we have a carrier molecule that will accept this red nitrogen containing group. So in the transamination step, Transamination means we transfer this amino group onto a different molecule. So when we transfer this amino group onto a carrier molecule, we form our products. So almost always the carrier molecule that accepts the nitrogen containing group is an alpha ketoglutarate. The exception to this we'll talk about in just a moment. So after we transfer this red amino group onto the alpha ketoglutarate, we form an alpha ketoacid and a glutamate. So when we remove the nitrogen from the alpha amino acid, we form the alpha ketoacid. When we give the red amino group onto the alpha ketoglutarate, we form a glutamate. Now, when we form glutamate, what happens next depends on the needs of the particular cell. So if we need to form non-essential amino acids in that cell, then this red group can be used by the glutamate to, uh, to help form that non-essential amino acids. If we don't need any amino acids, then the glutamate can then undergo the oxidative deamination step. And we'll talk about that in the next lecture. Now the enzymes that catalyze this transamination step are called transaminases, also known as aminotransferases. So aminotransferase and transaminase is the same exact enzyme. And these enzymes are found in the cytosol of cells, and we find them predominantly in cells of the liver, in the cells of the kidney, in the cells of the intestines, and in the cells of our muscle tissue. So skeletal muscle tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, and so forth. Now we have many different types of amino and uh, we have many different types of amino transferases depending on the individual amino acid that we're actually catalyzing. And the two amino transferases that you have to be familiar with are alanine amino transferase and aspartate amino transferase. Let's begin with the alanine amino transferase, also known as ALT. Now, alanine aminotransferase, as the name implies, acts on alanine amino acids. So here we have the alanine, which is our alpha amino acid, and here we have the carrier molecule that accepts that amino group, alpha ketoglutarate. So alanine aminotransferase catalyzes the movement of the nitrogen-containing group from the alanine onto the alpha ketoglutarate. So if we remove the amino group from alanine, we help form pyruvate. That's the alpha keto acid. When this alpha ketoglutarate gains the amino group, we form glutamate, as we talked about here. Now let's talk about the second enzyme, the aspartate aminotransferase. Now aspartate aminotransferase is actually interesting because it's the exception to the rule. In this reaction, we actually don't use alpha ketoglutarate as the carrier. We use another carrier molecule, namely oxaloacetate. And here, the amino acid that we act on is glutamate. So aspartate aminotransferase, also known as AST, catalyze the movement of an alpha amino group, so the nitrogen-containing group from the glutamate to oxaloacetate. And so we form alpha ketoglutarate and we form an aspartate. So when we remove the alpha amino group from the glutamate, we form the alpha ketoglutarate. When the nitrogen-containing group moves onto the oxaloacetate, we form aspartate. 
Now, normally the equilibrium constant for these reactions is about one. And so that means we can go this way or we can go in reverse. And the direction that it follows depends on the conditions and the states within our cell. Now, I also want to mention that these amino transferase, these enzymes, require a vitamin B6 as a coenzyme. And this is also known as pyridoxal phosphate. So these amino transferase utilize vitamin B6, so pyridoxal phosphate, to actually function effectively and, efficient, uh, and efficiently. So the pyridoxal phosphate is found attached covalently onto a lysine amino acid in the active side of these enzymes. And what this pyridoxal phosphate does is it initially accepts this nitrogen containing group from the alpha amino acid before it actually is transferred to that carrier molecule. So remember that amino transferases that, catal uh, that catalyze transaminase reactions require vitamin B6 to actually work effectively and efficiently. And a final thing I want to talk about is what happens if we find too many of these transaminases within our blood. So remember, Amino transferases are found in the cytosol of cells, but if cells undergo death and lice, they're going to release some of those contents, including the transaminases, the amino transferases, into the blood. And so in normal healthy individuals, because we have some baseline cell necrosis and cell death, we're going to find some small amount of amino transferases in our blood. But if we have a lot of cell necrosis and cell death in some of these major tissues and organs that contain these transaminases, then this can actually be a marker of disease. For example, if a patient overdoses on acetaminophen, the acetaminophen can actually be toxic to the liver and it can cause cell necrosis and cell death in the liver. And that can release a ton of amino transferases. And we can measure that in the serum in the blood and that could be a marker of disease of acute liver toxicity. So ischemia, toxicity by drugs or toxins, viral infections, all of these things can cause cell death and necrosis and that can release the amino transferases into the bloodstream and that can be a marker of disease. So remember we have AST and we have ALT. These are the major amino transferases we normally measure in uh, the laboratory. Now in terms of hepatic damage, in terms of liver damage, AST is more sensitive for liver damage. Why? Well because we find a lot of AST within the liver. But ALT is more specific for liver damage, and what that means is compared to other organs, we normally find more ALT within the liver than other organs such as the intestines and the kidneys and our muscle tissue and the biliary tract and so forth. So this is transaminase. In the, next re uh, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the second step, oxidative deamination.